Welcome to Cell Phone Technician course provided by Celtic. We will begin this course by learning about the basic building blocks of any electric or electronic equipment. So, our chapter 1 will be about voltage and current. Starting with voltage, what is voltage? It can be defined as the potential difference between two points. Voltage is measured in volts, represented by the capital letter V. Smaller units of volts are millivolts, represented by MV. 1000 millivolts is equal to 1 volt. Going back to the definition of voltage, what actually is this potential difference between two points? How can we prove it? For that, let us consider a power socket that is regularly seen and a battery. The power socket has holes for plugging in which are called terminals. One terminal is taken as the live or face terminal and the other terminal is taken as the neutral terminal. For the battery, the side that the metal body protrudes out is considered as the positive terminal denoted by plus and the other flat end is considered as the negative terminal denoted by minus. Now, how do we know the amount of voltage that is how many volts to this power socket and battery supply? For that, we need to measure the voltage that they can deliver at their terminals and this is done by a multimeter. A multimeter is used to measure various electrical quantities but for now let us only consider the measurement of voltage. To measure the voltage delivered by the power socket, adjusting the multimeter setting to measure voltage, one of the multimeter probes, say the red probe, is connected at the live terminal and the black probe is connected to the neutral terminal. Then the amount of voltage that can be delivered by the power socket is shown on the multimeter display. Similarly, to measure the voltage in the battery, the red probe is connected to positive terminal and the black probe is connected to negative terminal. The multimeter then displays the battery voltage. Now, what if only one probe of the multimeter is connected to measure the voltage at the power outlet. Do we get a value? No, the multimeter displays nothing. Do we get a value if I connect a single probe to one terminal of the battery? Not at all. Voltage value is displayed only if the multimeter probes connected to two terminals of the voltage source. So, from this we can prove that voltage is the potential difference between two points. Next to be discussed in voltage are the types of voltages. Voltage is basically classified into two types, AC voltage and DC voltage. AC stands for alternating current and DC stands for direct current. The DC voltage is the voltage that we get from batteries and the AC voltage is that used for residential, industrial purposes and etc. But why is this classification needed? Is there a seeming difference between the two types of voltage? Yes, we can observe the nature of the AC as well as the DC voltage by looking at their waveforms through an instrument called oscilloscope. The AC voltage waveform seen in an oscilloscope will be as shown in the picture. It is a sine wave. For DC voltage, the waveform obtained in the oscilloscope is a straight line. Now that we have understood that there exist two different types of voltages, let us also see their major differences. One difference that we have already observed is the difference 
in their waveforms that the AC voltage waveform is a sine wave and the DC voltage waveform is a straight line. Before taking the note of the other difference, let us understand the concept behind that. Take any equipment that works on a battery, like for example a wall clock. For the clock to function, we need to insert batteries in the right direction, that is the flat ends of the battery to the spring side and the protruding end to the other side. If we insert the battery in the direction opposite to the former, the clock does not function, does it? Not by any chance. You can try and see this for your mobile phone too. So, this implies that the battery has a fixed definition of terminals, one positive and the other negative. This way of fixing the terminals as one positive and the other negative is called polarity. When we take the case of AC voltage, let us consider the power supply socket and that a TV plug is to be connected to it. When the plug is inserted in one direction by letting one of its pins come above and the other below and when the switch is on, the TV switch is on. Then the plug is removed and flipped over. That is, the pin that was on the top earlier comes to the bottom and the bottom pin comes to the top. Then if the plug is inserted again and switched on, does the TV switch on? Yes, it surely does. So, what we can infer from this little experiment is that the AC voltage has no fixed terminal points. Any of the two can be considered as the live terminal and the other as the neutral terminal. So, here comes another difference between AC voltage and DC voltage. That the DC voltage has polarity and AC voltage does not have polarity. Next difference is that the AC voltage is to be used as and when we get it. We have supply at our homes all day. Even if we use it or not, we cannot put a hold on to the supply and save it for later. So the AC voltage cannot be stored. Whereas the DC voltage in the form of batteries can be stored. Now. Let us move on to current. Current plays an important role in the working of any equipment, be it electric or electronic. But what is this current and how does it come into picture? To answer this question, let us understand the concept of current. Consider two batteries of voltage 1.5 each but of different sizes. One battery is comparatively large in size. Now, taking two similar bulbs and connecting them to each battery individually, what can we observe? Since there is a source of voltage, the battery and a load to conduct, the bulbs start glowing. Now, everything seems to be alright, but after some time period, the bulb connected to the smaller size battery stops glowing while the other bulb continues to glow. To understand why this happens, let us apply the above concept to two people of same age but one strong and the other lean. Each of them is given a bag of equal weight and asked to walk. It is obvious that the stronger person will walk for long time compared to the lean person. It is obvious that even if two people are of the same age and are given the same work to carry out, the lean person gets exhausted much faster because of the difference of strengths possessed by the two people. Taking the age in this example equivalent to voltage and the weight given to each person equivalent to the light bulb, it can be inferred that the bulb connected to the smaller battery stops glowing comparatively earlier 
because there is less strength in that battery than the large battery. This strength can be called as current that the battery can deliver. So, current can be understood as the strength possessed by the voltage. But theoretically, current is defined as the flow of electrons. It is this flow of the charge carriers called electrons that causes the bulb to glow, our mobile phones to work, computers to switch on and the list continues. But when does this flow of electrons come into effect? It can be better understood by looking into the working of the light bulb again. In this picture, a light bulb is connected to a battery B with the help of some wires and a switch S is also provided to switch the bulb on or off. As soon as the switch is closed, the bulb starts glowing because a flow of electrons has been started. So, the point to be noted here is that the current flow exists only if there is a closed path for the electrons to flow. Previously, when the switch was in an open state, the path has a broken point at the switch. So, no electrons flowed, which means no current and the bulb stays in an off condition. Such a circuit is called as an open circuit. Then, when the switch was closed, the path for the electron flow was complete and there was the motion of electrons. So, the bulb came into on condition. Such a circuit is called closed circuit. So, with the voltage source connected, there will be no current flow in an open circuit, whereas in a closed circuit, there will be current flow. The units to measure current flowing through any device is taken in amperes or just amps and is denoted by the capital letter A. The smaller unit of ampere is the milliampere denoted by MA, where 1000 milliamperes is equal to 1 ampere. Concluding the topic, let's have a look at what we have learned so far. We have learned that voltage is defined as the potential difference between two points and it is measured in volts. Voltage is classified into AC voltage and DC voltage. Then we looked into their major differences that AC voltage has no polarity but the DC voltage has polarity and that AC voltage cannot be stored whereas DC voltage can be stored. Next, we moved on to current and understood its definition as the flow of electrons. We saw that current exists only in a closed path. Current is measured in amperes, denoted by the letter A. So there, we are done with the basic topics, the voltage and current. This video explains the fundamentals of these topics which are enough for a person learning cell phone repair. These concepts come into application while working with the circuit board of a mobile phone. So, even if somebody is not able to understand these concepts and terminology, there is no need to panic because the basic cell phone repair like speaker changing, mic changing, display changing, etc. do not need them. So that's it for now. We will meet again in the next video.